In this video, I am super excited to show you five of my favorite foods that will not only stimulate autophagy, but are incredibly yummy to eat and easy to implement into your daily life. Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and today I'm going to bring you a combination of science, some practicality, and as always, I like to give you a vision for how you use these tools to not only help your health today, but down the road. So I wanna specifically dive into autophagy, and I wanna dive into the foods that we know based off of science, um, stimulate autophagy, and then I wanna show you just like how the heck I use this in my everyday life. So the first thing to think about and to remember is that autophagy is a long game. This isn't like a fast where you're trying to drop weight really quickly. These are really cool principles that can tap into your cell's ability to detoxify. So I've done a lot of videos on autophagy um, and I, I hopefully if you're watching this, you have some idea about what autophagy is. But the way I like to explain it is it's like if you need to clean up your house and you brought in a massive cleaning crew that went in from room to room to room and they cleaned and straightened everything up, the, they would be the autophagy crew. And that's the way I look at the foods I'm gonna show you. That's the way I look at fasting. Um, that's the way I look at some of the other principles that we use to stimulate autophagy. So the other thing that we know, just like if you didn't have the cleaning crew or you didn't clean your own house on a regular basis, everything would get cluttered and, and start to get congested. That's what's happening in your cells. So if you're not putting any effort into stimulating autophagy, your cells are building up with toxins. And we now know through research, I'm going to put the links in here for those of you that are research hounds, that we now know through research that there's some very specific conditions that are linked to cells that didn't get enough autophagy. So those are cancer, many different cancers, diabetes, heart disease, osteoporosis. We get this question a lot here on my channel about osteoporosis. So yes, osteoporosis can be a buildup uh, of toxins inside the cell that are preventing and not enough stimulation of autophagy. Alzheimer's and muscle loss. So I'll put those connections in there. So in order to prevent these things, you need to set up a long-term game to stimulate autophagy. And these next five foods, introducing these into your diet on a regular basis makes a whole lot of sense in my book. So let me start with number one and probably one that has got a tremendous amount of research. I don't wanna say the most research, but it's the most fun, I think, to eat. And it was brought to my attention by my interview with Naomi Whittle that I did last week on Resetter TV. And that is cacao which is chocolate. So there are a lot of different ways to, to get cacao into your diet, get chocolate into your diet. Uh, the study or the conversation that Naomi and I had was around uh, the Mars company and that the Mars company actually um, went in and did research on what chocolate does for autophagy. Now, that doesn't mean you go out and eat a Mars bar. I would prefer that you would go after clean cacao sources. So a couple different things that you can look for when you're buying chocolate. You can look for the word cacao. So this was actually drinking chocolate, organic drinking chocolate that I found at my local farmer's market. And the number one ingredient is cacao. So number one, number two is cacao butter. So great uh, solution. Uh, here is a, a cacao that a friend recommended that you can put into your coffee. Um, or you could just dive into chocolate, but when you do chocolate, you wanna really go after the, the really extremely dark. So this is the darker, the more chocolate in there, the more cacao. So now here's the warning sign or the warning, my warning to you in all of this is that this doesn't mean go eat Hershey bars. This doesn't go, mean go eat chocolate that's high in sugar. You still wanna play by some of the keto rules like stevia and urethritol and really not you leaning on the more sugary things. 
So cacao is great. Um, a cacao butter is awesome because there's no sugar into it or stevia in it. Um, just make sure you're not doing everyday cacao with sugar. That would not be a great uh, way to prevent disease and extend your life. Okay. Now the study done on cacao, just for you guys that are, that are research hounds was done through the journal of agricultural food chemistry in 2009. And it was done on liver cells. And so they found that when they gave cacao to these liver cells, that it stimulated autophagy. Super cool, right? So that's, we love, we love that. We love cacao. So, okay. Second thing, coffee. Okay, now I'm gonna give you some warning on coffee because not all coffee, just like chocolate, not all coffee is made equal. So, but let me start off by telling you that they did a study in out of cell cycle in 2014 and they found that one to four hours after you drank coffee, they noticed an increase in autophagy in the liver, in muscle tissue and in your heart, in heart tissue. So um, that's pretty cool as well. Here are my recommendations for coffee. They need to be organic. So we know pesticides is going to create more cell death. It's gonna create more toxins in cells. The other a big issue we have with coffee is that it, it can often have a lot of mold. Uh, Dave Asprey brought this to our attention with Bulletproof uh, Coffee. At, so you wanna make sure it's organic and you wanna make sure it's mold free. Otherwise, you're trying to stimulate autophagy, but you're adding toxins in doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, you can go to my website. Uh, I have some of my personal coffee favorites on there and how you can order those if you're, if you're not sure which path to go with coffee. So, but coffee, number two, okay? Number three is curcumin. Now I know a lot of you guys know this, but curcumin is that really magical component of turmeric. There's also a lot of different ways that you can get curcumin into your diet. You can sprinkle it on your food. So we always buy our spices organic, so you can sprinkle it on your food. Um, we like to actually get the turmeric root at um, our local Whole Foods, and we like to juice it and put it in a juicer and just drink it with a green juice. Um, it's a little woody tasting, but it can be, a, and you can also cut it up and put it into um, stir fries as well, but that is a wonderful way to get a big dose of curcumin. And then you can see that we love this bottle because it's almost empty. This is a lemon turmeric salad dressing with the right oils that was put out by Primal Kitchen. So super, I love Primal Kitchen salad dressings. If you're not using them, they have all the right oils, but I immediately saw this, this on the shelf and I was like, turmeric, okay. I'm always looking for ways to increase turmeric into my family's diet. So the research done on turmeric is showing that it increases autophagy in pancreatic cells. They also did a, a study, that was a study done in 2017. They also did a study in 2019 on a tick-borne disease and found that um, curcumin inhibited the proliferation of the disease by stimulating an apoptosis, which is cell death, and by stimulating autophagy in other cells, which cleans the cell up. So those of you, when I saw that, a tick-borne disease, I thought Lyme immediately. Well, gosh, if you had Lyme, wouldn't it make sense to increase turmeric into your diet? Um, the other thing that many of you know is that if you put turmeric with black pepper, it goes into the cell at a deeper level, okay? So that's curcumin. Okay, number four, also a really fun way to get this into, get um, to use is olive oil. Now, let me tell you a couple of things about olive oil. You want to make sure that it's organic. You want to make sure that it's never rancid. So you want to smell it like it shouldn't live in your countertop. It shouldn't live in your in your cupboards for a long time, um, because if it goes rancid, it's not going to stimulate autophagy. It'll actually create cellular inflammation. The other thing you don't want to do with olive oil is heat it up. So if you heat it up and put it on a pan and it starts to smoke, you've now turned it into an inflammatory fat. But the, the research on um, olive oil is also really cool in the sense that they're finding that it has an effect on the beta amyloid and tau proteins that are associated with Alzheimer's. This was a study done out of Te uh, Temple University. Um, they also have been doing studies on olive oil with uh, 
the um, cancer. So it was done on metastatic osteosarcoma. This is a recent study. Again, I'll put all these studies in the links, um, but try to use, I mean, use as much olive oil as possible. I would even say you could take a scoop of it and, and have a, a tablespoon a day if you're looking, especially you could even do that within your fasting window to try to stimulate more autophagy inside your body um, while, but not breaking your fast. So that's a really cool thing to look at. Okay, and then the last thing um, uh, is green tea. And I'm actually going to even add on to that. I'll put tea in the category, but it's green tea and bergamot tea. So green tea has, again, we know there's so many different um, studies done. I mean, hopefully you know by now green tea is considered a health food. Um, it's a great alternative if you don't want to get too much stimulation from coffee. Um, but Nutrient Journal 2019 did a study on the neuroprotective effects of green tea. They also found that it stimulates autophagy in any cell that it was exposed to. It's one of those universal uh, stimulators of autophagy. So super cool. And then Bergmont, which Naomi's a big fan of, Bergmont tea was actually done on both a mice study and a human study. So a lot of these studies are, are mice studies. When we see something in a, my, a mouse study, it's awesome, it's, in, it's exciting, but we'd like to see it in a human study. That would be more definitive. And they found that Bergmont um, oil, so like an essential oil, created autophagy in human neuroblastomas, cancer again. So this is nerve tissue, these are tumors in cancer. So, and that was done in 2014. So there you go. Those are five things that you can implement on a, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. When you go to put an autophagy plan together for yourself, take all these tools that I'm giving you, go watch the videos that I've shown you, and that you'll see that we have like 20 different things that we can be doing on a regular basis to stimulate autophagy, to slow down the, this degeneration of our cells, to slow down the aging process. Fasting is phenomenal. And let's start implementing some of these other things. And let, as you build a lifestyle that's filled with all of these autophagy stimulating behaviors, you're gonna find, not only are you gonna feel better, you're gonna find that you're gonna age better as well. So again, as always, I just wanna bring you guys information. I wanna teach you how to think. I don't wanna just tell you, hey, go drink, go eat a bunch of turmeric. I want you to think the process through and make sure that you are customizing your own health plan that will benefit you. If you need more customization, this is what we're doing in my Reset Academy. Those of you that are women, this is what we do with our women's, women's Reset, is we I walk you through a 15-day customization that will unstick your metabolism, that will teach you how to use all the different fasts, how to use all the different fish, and you and I get to interact, which is really cool, in a group environment, so I can really dive deep with you. So if you want more information on our Women's Reset, just put Women's Reset uh, in the comments, and we'll make sure you get that information. So, but as always, I hope this helps. Let me know if it's helpful. If you want more practical information like this, let me know so I can customize these videos for you. As always, hope that helps.